Right, I've made thousands of videos. Even if you paid me a piece, I'm still probably gonna be a way better ROI. What have you seen as the best ROIs today? Google almost always outperformed Facebook at almost every single market. However, Facebook in many different markets, it outperforms Google. Have you found that pictures or video ads work better? Um, pictures work really, really well, uh, except What's up, well builders? Today, we're talking about real estate marketing. Now, I'm gonna be going in depth about how to reach home sellers. And I've got two guys who have been experts at this for a really long time. They run VA companies, ad agencies. They've done it for themselves. They've done it for lots of clients. In fact, they've hired over a thousand um, VAs that they have placed with other clients. And so I'm gonna go in depth on like, what is the best way in 2024 to go generate leads for your real estate business? I got Esteban and Omir. What's up, guys? Thanks, man, for having us here. Yeah, yeah. we're super excited. We're excited. Yeah, so right now you guys have an agency. You guys have, you know, done millions of dollars in your agency just targeting homeowners and everything else. Like, it, what is that? Is that mainly Facebook ads and everything? Yeah, it started as Facebook ads, and then it evolved quickly as Google ads and YouTube ads. The more demand that people... Uh, were giving us as uh, to, hey, I really need to get my Facebook ads going, my Google ads going. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, it became a, like an all-encompassing solution where now we just support them on the lead generation side, lead conversion side, lead management side, so that people can actually understand the entire cycle of what it needs to actually grow a company. And um, we had a we had a baby la like a business baby last last uh, year. Yeah, and I was half. like, yeah, yeah, we had a baby. Is, I'm like, who did, who did I bring to the show? So yeah. What's going on? It's here? remote Latinos. Okay, that yeah. it was given its birth. Yeah. is essentially uh, from the business. Uh, Hustle Media helps with marketing, uh, helps with sales conversion, lead management, and then there was something missing. Uh, that that thing that was missing was um, how do we help them scale? Right, you you build a company through through systems, and then you scale a company through people. So remote Latinos, what that was that perfect uh, dis disconnect that was in the marketplace, where it actually helped us um, understand why do people that are bootstrap in a wholesale business don't really grow or pass a certain mark in their business, mm -hmm. and that's because they don't know how to hire talent, know to know how to find the right talent, and take advantage of the remote work that exists out there, like yeah. in Latin America. Yeah. So that's where Remote Latinos was. Yeah. And so at Remote Latinos, it's a VA hiring agency, right? Because like right now I could go on Upwork and go hire VAs and pay them whatever, three bucks, five bucks, 10 right. bucks, whatever right. it is per hour. Um, or some agencies I see, they'll manage the VA for you and maybe they'll charge 10 bucks, 15 bucks, you know, 10 to 15 to like full on train them, manage them, everything you guys have a different model where you're basically like a recruitment firm. You're just, you know, placing a VA for somebody for a very specific purpose. And then at that point they pay the VA, they're on salary, whatever it is with them, it's whatever. Yeah, that's correct. So we actually came from uh, the background of helping digital marketing agencies and, or, you know, I, I was actually wholesaling my way on Detroit and fi fix and flipping in my way in Detroit. And I didn't like the the long sales cycle. Were you in Detroit? Did you live in Detroit? I lived in Detroit. Okay. For three and a half years. Why? Uh, I actually I'm My an question. engineer. Yeah. Oh, you're an engineer. Yeah, I, I graduated from mechanical engineering and uh, went to a school in Carleton University in Ottawa. Uh, after graduation, found myself just doing Uber because there was no jobs. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, in Michigan, they called me one time in LinkedIn and they said, "Hey, we're a recruitment firm." Uh, we we want to place you inside of Chrysler, um, inside of Magna Chrysler, all these automotive industry um, companies. So uh, that's where I started seeing the opportunity of real estate. You know, real Detroit is full of opportunity, man. Like, yeah, we've right sold some deals in Detroit. Yeah, I bought a duplex in Saginaw, so I'm familiar. Yeah, nice. yeah. so uh, actually that's just where I started. One in Lansing. Lansing is nice. Yeah, yeah. Actually, people think that Detroit is like kind of like the worst thing that that you can go and travel and visit Detroit. What are you doing? Like, yeah, I was I was living in Toronto and I, I moved to Detroit. I was going to move to Detroit and people were asking me, like questioning me, my life. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what are the okay? hell is going yeah. on? Yeah, uh, I'm yeah. like, hey, I'm going to give it a try. There's a 30 percent, 30 percent discount that I get when I pay my Canadian bills, yeah. essentially. Yeah, and, and Detroit's way cheaper than Canada. That's for sure. That's right. Well, you know, look, 
I always like make fun of the Midwest because I actually lived in the Midwest for many years playing baseball. But um, <clears throat> man, I mean, we own apartments in Iowa. They're crushing it. They're doing great. So I'm a Midwest guy, and I've made money in Detroit in multiple, you know, multiple deals. And I will say, yeah, there are the the homes that you literally can't give away. <laughs> and then there are homes that are like $300,000 that are mm. like really nice mm. suburb homes and, you know, whatever. Go in there, got you into real estate. Well, you know what? Um, I, I I remember going to Fortune Builders three-day seminar, and that's kind of got me, got me hooked into wholesaling and flipping. Uh, I partnered up with two guys that were, that were also working in Chrysler, and our first flips didn't work. Um, and I also hated so long to make money. Like yeah. at that time I was like, I wanted to make money like to today, <laughs> not, not in three months. Didn't have time. Yeah, no time. And then, um, wholesaling was kind of the same. You yeah. need to do like, they were telling us to go to auctions, drive for dollars, think all these traditional th- things. And then I always thought there was a better way. I always thought that, um, Hey, look! I can do this online. I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm always scrolling in social media. I'm always seeing all these ads. At that time, Gary V, Grant Cardone was big. They're running ads, and um, so I, I, one time took a course that was Facebook ads for e-commerce, Facebook ads for gym owners, and things like that. And also one Facebook ad course for real estate agents. And and I was like, okay, there's no Facebook ads course for real estate wholesalers, investors, flippers, but I can take the same principles that I learned from this course and potentially apply to this. So instead of doing it for myself, I actually went in a post and I said, uh, I know how to run Facebook ads for to get houses. Who wants to do a test drive for seven days? And that was a Facebook group inside of Detroit, you yeah. know, real estate investors. And a lot of comments uh, I got a lot of comments, and that's how I found my first ever client that was actually a case study from a Detroit Argentinian uh, cash buyer <laughs> that used to do everything, uh, auctions. Yeah. He used to do bird dogging, <clears throat> all that stuff. And we talked, and I told him, dude, you got to be able to do this online. I, I can bring you houses. You do whatever it is that you got to do. Uh, I'll text you every single address that we're going to find from people submitting the form online. Yep. And you go and, and close them. Yeah, you so we did that. For them. And then we did that for, for like maybe five months or so. We spent like $9,000. And it was about 24 properties that he actually got. Yeah. Uh, so that was like my first ever case study. And I was like, whoa, this works. I'm going to start like implementing it, um, doing this for a lot of people in Detroit. And then I got a people in, um, I got a people in another part of Seattle, and then I got another person in Florida. We started growing uh, yeah. because people needed to find leads, basically. Yeah. Nice. So, Amir, when did you step in? Yeah. So I've been in the marketing space since 2018. I used to work for uh, Joel Kaplan, someone that a lot of people are familiar with in the marketing game. And uh, I was his top closer for many years. And I noticed that a lot of agency owners are struggling with finding people you're you mentioned upwork yeah but like there's upwork there's online jobs at ph like you can go on those websites but at the end of the day you've got to put in the time to recruit to interview to to do the whole process and every second that you're spending on that is second time that you're not spending on your yeah. business and getting deals and i noticed that so then i started my company in 2020 and uh we helped probably about 150 200 agency owners at that time and then esteban became one of my clients and he was like all right there's something here i feel like we can help investors i don't know how there's there's clearly a uh, an opportunity here, and that's where Molotinos came in. We were like, we we came up with a name, and you know, it, and I always like to say like, our backgrounds are so different because he's an engineer. I'm a I, I'm almost dropped out of high school. I barely graduated college. Yeah, you're a hustler. Yeah, yeah, and then I was just a sales guy, you know, so yeah. sales at heart. And um, yeah, the the ultimate thing for us was was to test it, test it to see if we can help investors because at the time I was only working with agency owners, and the process is very similar except investors don't have as much internet or marketing knowledge and they have to they need a little bit more help and support yeah and that's where we came in and we actually started building a lot of the systems and making sure that we can support them outside of just well you know hiring the va yeah you know what's crazy so i feel like i come from both worlds of what you guys are because like i'm a hustler at heart who's like really never had a job just always hustling selling doing something but then you know i have an economics degree like i understand the data and 
I, I, I would say I might have like an engineering mind to piece things together and solve problems and things. And so, um, when I got started flipping houses, all I ever did was just network and hustle MLS wholesalers, realtors, all this stuff. Hmm. And then when I started doing direct to seller marketing, I never ran Facebook ads or anything, but, um, I got cold callers hmm. and you know what I did? I didn't want to hire VAs. So I hired Americans hmm. and I was paying them like 1500 bucks a month you know, to go dial and make cold calls. And then they got commissions if they closed. But dude, the funniest thing was this was in 2018. Um, I just pulled a random list. And back then there wasn't like all this YouTube and stuff out there teaching people how to do stuff. So I was like, I don't know. I'll just pull a list. And then I was having them hand dial from their phone. Like I didn't think no to CRM, get a, nothing, nothing, no CRM, yeah, yeah, yeah. no dialer, nothing, nothing, nothing. Just like straight from their iPhone. Yeah. yeah. And surprisingly, we got deals, even though it was so inefficient, yeah. so dumb, whatever. Yeah. And the reason I tell this story is because you don't have to be perfect to get deals. You know, we were by no means perfect. And I did 150 deals that year mm. doing that MLS wholesalers, every, like just so inefficient and dumb. Um, and today there's no excuse for not like being efficient and doing it yeah. the right way. Like, you can get VAs, there, there's softwares, there's agencies, there's coaching, there's all these things to do it the right way. Information is out there. Um, so yeah, you know, it's just funny to like see everyone's progression. At what point did you hire your first VA? Outside um, of US? We got our first VA 2019, like nice. after doing it for a little bit with Americans, I was like, you know what? I hear about these VAs and everyone talking about them. Let me try it. Yeah. And dude, it was crazy because I was paying the Americans you know, I don't know what it came out to per hour, but let's say it was like 10 bucks an hour. Mm. And then, you know, I get the VAs at three bucks an hour mm. and they outperformed the Americans. Mm. And I was like, what the heck? Like these guys get more leads and they were way cheaper. I could hire three, four times as many of them. It was crazy. Now they couldn't close, no. you know, they weren't closing deals, but they yeah. were generating the leads. And then I'd have my best Americans go close them. And, you know, I, ever since then, I've had VAs in my business. Yeah. Do you, do you hire Filipinos uh, at first? Well, bro, freaking, I'm Filipino, man. Of course, of course. Look, I, re I, re I respect Latinos too. You know, I'm trying to learn Spanish, but yeah. I got to support my people. <laughs> of course. And we, we do too. That's funny. People see our name. They're like, oh, you guys only hire from Latin America, which yeah, yeah. is absolutely not true. We hire probably 30 to 40% from the Philippines. <laughs> Why so. you call remote Latinos then? <laughs> because because, because the, the, the concept was people in the U.S. want Latinos because they're on the same time zone. Time zone. They speak Spanish. Spanish and uh, the culture. The culture. culture. Yeah. So we're targeting Latinos for clients. Yeah. However, we have a separate company which is called Remote Fam, and that is our place where we find all the people in the world because we really want to hire from anywhere. We've hired Re from like Remote Fam. Remote yeah. Fam. That's we. That's just is targeting. it with a PH. <laughs> that's <laughs> how I would do. Which, it by the, the way, we also own a bunch of other remotes. Yeah. Um, Remote Africans, remote Asians. <laughs> yeah, we own it. We, we own, own it. it. We got them all. Yeah, yeah exactly. So you're building a brand around them all. 100. Exactly. percent It's like yeah, half of my team and his team are in the Philippines. You know, we've we've yeah. hired tons of people. Why so. are there so many VAs in the like? Why is the Philippines such a huge hub for it? Well, first off, it's there's 120 million people there, which I didn't even know until I started working with Filipinos. Which Bro, is, I went to the Philippines a month ago for the first time ever in my life. That's right, you told us that, and yeah, I was shocked at like we flew into Manila. I was like, this place is massive. Massive. I'm like, this is nuts. I would have never expected that. Ever. So that's the first thing. The other thing is, um, I want. I don't know the exact history, but I know somewhere a long time ago they got you know conquered and they started learning English through being yeah, the Spaniards. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, the, a lot of the Filipinos actually work with Australians, so their English a lot of times is you know they have like an Australian accent, but I think they also they. Be they are such hard workers and loyal people at yeah. heart. Like you, you hear Filipinos care about family, culture, loyalty, and just working their ass off just to making sure they can take care of their family. And I think people just, now it's being exploited to the ultimate max. Like there's so many VA companies that are based in the Philippines. So yeah, we right. saw an opportunity where we're like, well, yes, we want to hire people in the Philippines, but you know, there's like almost a billion people in Latin America, like yeah. not even including Brazil. Yeah. Right. So for us, it was just an opportunity where we can help. Hey, let's help the Filipinos, but also help Latinos. Yeah. So actually, uh, I heard that even in the Philippines, they even train you go to school to become a virtual assistant. Right. Wow. Um, in Latin America, that doesn't exist. 
if you learn English, it's because you went your, out of your own way. Mm. Like if you learn English, it's because you're hungry. Mm. Um, so in the Philippines, English is more of a second language rather yeah. than if you go to Mexico, if you go to Colombia, Venezuela, it's not a second language. It's just an optional language that you get to learn by yourself or at school. Yeah. So what you see in Latin America is, it's essentially what you see when people come here in the US, whether that's legally or illegally, yeah. and you s it's hunger, right? Mm -hmm. and, and ultimately you want the best hunger from your employees uh, because they, you, you wanna make sure that you find people that are willing to um, work hard, yeah. right? We're willing to just follow your leadership and at the same time, give it all, give it a hundred percent. Yeah. I'm biased, obviously being half Filipino, but like, I do think that, like you said, Filipinos are super loyal. Um, and they're like the nicest people ever. ever. Yeah. <laughs> ever. Super no, nice. Literally. <laughs> yeah, they're just yeah. like always happy. I think also that's why you, they make great nurses. When you when you went, you might have been one of the tallest people there, right? They're like they're oh, yeah, relatively dude, like, like a. They're like, who is this? This guy's a celebrity, man. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. No, I I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, so I, yeah. one, one thing I know I've noticed too is that people pay more for the Latinos though. Mm. Is that true? Yeah. Also, they want more money. Like it's a it's more expensive to live in yeah. Latin America, depending on the country. But you get Spanish, which is correct. Very huge, useful. Huge. Like yeah. Texas, California, Vegas, Florida. I mean, yeah, Vegas yeah. is important. Yeah. We just got picked up by well, actually earlier before yeah. the first one yeah. was a Latino. Yeah. Uh, I think you have some, Liliana. Yeah. In, in front desk. She's yeah, we got Latina. a lot of Spanish speakers here. Yeah. So yeah, I think um, like what let's talk about. I mean, I wanted to. I mean, so many things I want to talk with you guys about, but like, since we're on the topic of VAs and everything, right? My assumption is most of the VAs people are using you guys to to hire for them are for cold calling. Is that correct? A lot of them are, but there's also lead managers. That's becoming a really hot topic. And uh, executive assistant. That's another one. Graphic designing, uh, video editing, which is yeah. something that we've helped uh, Javi and yep. you know your media company with. So. I would say that um, for sure cold calling because that is that's like where you start. I feel like everybody's career as a VA starts as a cold caller and then they progress. <laughs> they get better <laughs> skills. <laughs> well, they, that's like they're, you know, that's I, the easy I started, yeah. I, you started, you were a hustler. I started five guys, you know what I'm saying? That's so right. for me, that was like my five guys is cold calling yeah. and then kind of just upgrading from that. Um, and then now, I mean, believe it or not, there are closers in Latin America, like acquisition right. managers. These guys are closing yeah. deals. Here, closing here, deals. Here's one thing that a lot of people don't know about. <laughs> I, I don't believe it. <laughs> yeah, man. Like we have our closer, our Johan. Closer. He's, our, my closer you jump is, into a call with us. Yeah. Johan is Colombian. Yeah. He's what is it? He's closing home sellers? He's closing he right now he's closing investors. High, high and ticket. High ticket. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Investors and agency owners. But we we've placed a bunch of people that are closing uh, um, homeowners. So so what happens is that they get hired as a lead manager. They prove themselves after two, three, four months. And that's yeah. their next advancement because they don't want to be stuck as a co-caller yeah. or lead manager. They want to advance to become an acquisition manager. And if they speak great English, they come from sales backgrounds. I mean, yeah. I, I haven't been to the Philippines. We plan on going hopefully this year. Yeah. But in Latin America, every other corner, someone's selling you something. <laughs> yeah, they're <laughs> like, all hustlers. Yeah, they're hustlers, right. hustlers, hustlers. Imagine so, if you combine English with a system. Like if you just gave me every Mexican at the airport, bro. bro Unbelievable, exactly. especially in Cancun. Yeah, I mean, dude, you get I'm, off. It's next like, time I go to Mexico, I'm taking ten of them back with me and throwing them <laughs> on the sales floor, dude. Yeah, great man. idea, Absolutely. honestly. That's a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> I mean, we went to Playa and we were like basically interviewing where they go. Yeah, <laughs> we're interviewing all these people. <laughs> yeah, you guys like, have you heard life? of remote Latinos or Latino remotos? That's how it's called. Latino remotos. Yeah, it's yeah. Latino, Latino remotos. Yeah. Um, so uh, one thing that people don't realize is okay. So Filipinos are great. Uh, workers, I love them. We have a lot of Filipinos, uh, and I live I live with the Filipino. But I, they're so nice, right? They're yeah. kind of like the. They're not going to be good salespeople. They're like the no. Canadian. They're too of nice. The Asians. They're customer service. Yes. Say yeah. that again. They're the Canadians, <laughs> of, <laughs> Asia. Canadians of the Asians. Yes. The Canadians yes. of the Asians. Yes. They're so nice. They're not going to challenge you. They're not going to speak up. They always said that the Philippines was the Mexicans of Asia. Mm. This is the first I'm hearing that they're the Canadians of Asia. <laughs> yeah, well, it's because I'm Canadian, so I can yeah. talk shit. Yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> but, so they're they're super nice. That doesn't make them very good salespeople. They're too. Correct. They're not. They're not. Um. They're too agreeable. Mm -hmm. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. While, uh, for example, if you go to Colombia, you go to Medellin. Uh, Everyone is trying to negotiate. They're trying to 4X, 5X the price on anything. 
Uh, even if it, <laughs> even even if I am Colombian, they're gonna try to make the most amount of money. Yeah. Or if, even when they're buying something, they're trying to negotiate as much as possible as yes. well. Yeah. And so you have you have this not only the hustle culture, but also the sales and negotiation culture yeah. in in Colombia, for example. And um, and like it or not, like a lot of these people, they're just finding out about this virtual job, remote job opportunities. So it's they are, so for example, they we have it. a bunch of engineers. We hire a bunch of engineers. We hire a bunch of team lead, leads from other companies. Uh, we, we take people from realtor.com, for example, in yeah. Latin America, and we tell them to work in our company as, for example, a client success manager, right? right? They work as a client success manager for us, and they're able to take that leadership role like very very easily which you just need to train them a little bit more and of what it takes to actually manage a entrepreneur uh, american entrepreneur yeah. or for example in the real estate space well not only creative executive assistants um lead managers acquisition managers but there's a bunch of different roles that they can ac actually cover because when you hear the term ba for the first time it'll be like okay so the va will do my kind of basic stuffs, like yeah. kind of lower, lower level sp stuff, but they don't think that they can, you know, lead the team, manage entire team projects. Um, uh, they could be just, I still people. have that false belief. Hmm. Yeah. And it's okay. I yeah. understand it because it's relatively a new thing. Uh, ever since, um, COVID happened, a lot of, you know, remote things are very still new. So still people are still adapting to it. Yeah. But one of our mission is actually, to change that belief because remote Latinos are as capable as an American. They have the same type of skill sets to just cost lower to an American business. Like, let's talk about the cost. What do they cost? So we t always encourage them to start at five to $7 an hour minimum to get started. But a lot of them are gonna, uh, depending on the experience that they have, the skill sets that they have, um, or where they are right now, yeah. well, they want to start a little bit higher, but yeah. five to seven is a good start. Yeah, yeah, we don't do the cheap VAs, you know, and we, it's, you mentioned the word VA, like, I don't even like calling our team VAs, we call them remote team members, right? because right. like the word VA just is almost like, it's, it, like it, a low level, yeah, it's, like, it's a little bit, low level. it's been diluted through time, Very diluted, I think yeah. that VA at some point it was like, wow, this is great, great people that are helping me virtually. At some point, it started uh, diluting through time. The market like, just got okay. so saturated with so many VA exactly. companies. So it's like, yeah. Even it applies the same thing as Filipinos, right? Yeah. Like people don't, don't, sh don't, don't give them the opportunity to fail enough. Uh, and so they, can sh they cannot show up their skills. Yeah. They, can, they, cannot, they cannot show the true things. To yeah. th they cannot show the true abilities. And that's what happens in a lot of companies that have virtual mm -hmm. assistants. They only keep it there. So mm -hmm. here's the hard part, right? And I guess this is where you guys come in. Because I've hired lots of VAs and I've used hiring companies and stuff. So let's say somebody watching this, listening to this, they're like, look, I'm going to go hire my own. I'm going to go to Upwork or Fiverr or uh, the, whatever the Facebook group is. I forgot. Yeah. Uh, remote P. What is it? Uh, there's onlinejobs.ph. Yeah, onlinejobs.ph, yeah. right? Um, there's Facebook groups. There's all yeah. this stuff, right? And you can go get somebody at three bucks. You can get them at five. You can get them at seven. How do you know if they're any good? Mm. How do you train them? How do you, you know, whatever, right? Is that where you guys come into play where you're yep. like, look, we're going to go train them up and hire them and everything else. And then you're getting this like person who knows exactly what to do for you. Like you've already agreed to their salary with them. How does it work? Yeah, great question. So first things first is we always look for people that come with experience and they actually go through an entire process of us knowing that they're legit, right? Because a lot of these people, they're posting a job ad and immediately getting on interviews. They're not taking people through a skill test they don't have other team members on their team to interview them to a pre-screening interview. Yeah. And you could tell a lot by person's resume and video. Like that's not everything, but you can tell a lot by that. What we do after that, we also provide a uh, skill test. We help our clients create a skill test uh, that could be a written test, uh, test about like real estate or like a test that, you know, uh, something to do with role play. So we actually do a hardcore qualification process where if you're not legit, you're not going to go through the process. We, we literally, out of the thousands and thousands of VAs and team members, whatever, that we get on a regular basis, 85 to 90% don't even make it through because they're just not, they're not real. They're not, they're not good enough. Yeah. They're not good enough, right? So we focus on the 10 to 20%. And one of the things that we started doing recently is poaching, right? The best people work. 
Yeah. That's the thing. Like they, they're not if, looking for a job. A hundred percent. If I wanted to, if I came to Vegas and I started a real estate company, I'm like, who's working for Ryan Pineda? <laughs> That's who and, I want. <laughs> right. And who's yeah. working for Ryan Pineda? I'm, I'm, how do I, how do I get here? Or if I'm, you know, competing with you, I'm like, how do I offer someone a much better salary than you are? Yeah. Cause now you're, you know, you got the best people in the, in the world. Cause that's, you have yeah. to feel about that. So that to me right there, people don't have the time to poach, right? You're not sitting there and poaching from talent. And that's where our recruiters and our staff come in. We're poaching talent from realtor.com, from other places that have, you know, there's a huge company. When you were in Colombia, I don't know if you use the company called uh, Rappi. You heard of Rappi? I can't it's, remember. It's like an all-in-one SaaS that you can literally buy food, groceries, like oh, wow. everything. It's literally everything. Instacart, card, actually. It's like wow. everything, yeah. like electricity, like Advil, like whatever you want. Like it, they deliver it to your house. But there's a lot of VAs that work for Rappi, but they're getting paid a no dollar, two dollars an hour. Right. Right. Because the average Colombian makes 200 to 250 dollars a month. The average bilingual person makes 500 dollars a month. With us, they're starting at eight hundred dollars a month, which is already oh, they're killing it. One hundred percent. Like our team members are making, you know, a thousand to fifteen hundred. We have people that are making over two thousand dollars a month, which is like doctor salary, literally. Yeah, they're, it is. Literally, they're no, salary. literally doctor salary. So for us, that's a huge game changer. But we have to be good enough to find the talent, and that's what we've been doing for the last three years: is compiling the, the these type of candidates and presenting them, making the person go through the process with us much easier and much faster. So, like, if I wanted to hire a VA, what's it cost me to hire them from you? Yeah, we have a pay per hire model and a uh, unlimited model. So pay per hire could be anywhere from three to five k, depending on how many people. It's usually one to three VAs, okay. or the unlimited. It's ten k, and then you get unlimited. It's up to sixty for the year. Dang. And yeah, so That's it's a lot it's, of an, it's a no brainer offer. We actually if got you're a bigger company to hire hundred percent. So yeah. if you're scaling it, we just got a client today, an uh, investor from Germany actually, and he's he's like, guys, I'm going to be hiring like five six people over the next six months. It is a no brainer offer there, but we don't offer that most of the time because. If you're an investor doing two deals a month, you don't need more than one person. No, no, you Not don't even. need that. But like, yeah, yeah, I'm like 10K. You'll go get all the VAs for me and like make sure they're legit. That's yeah. easy. Yeah, it's a no brainer offer. That's all. Yeah. So like with that, um, that's to hire VAs for anything you're talking about, like lead managers. You know, for, for anyone who doesn't know, a leads manager is somebody who's basically just kind of filtering leads that, you know, they're not trying to close. They're trying to maybe warm them back up, follow up you know, set an appointment, you know, and I, I do think that VAs can do that job extremely well. Mm. Um, you know, like I, I've had Americans do the job. I've had VAs do it. Like there's not really much of a difference. Mm -hmm. That's right. Have you ever thought about <clears throat> hiring like a lead manager that's hybrid? Is that ever like someone that does a little like bit of Like somebody who can close too? Close and lead manager. Is that something that you've done in the past or something you do now? Um, I mean, obviously you want a lead manager to become a closer one day. That's right. So like, you know, yeah, if they like I have had people who start out in that role and then they, they start closing people and you're like, all right, but then they they move up. Mm. Yeah, because yeah. lead manager actually translates to appointment setter in many different other industries. Right. right. Like in the real estate, people are used to the lead manager or yeah. follow up specialist uh, term. Acquisition manager is the closer, mm -hmm. right? Lead manager is appointment setter. Mm -hmm. So if uh, someone that does appointment setting and uh, like you said, filtering the leads, but also does the entire triage or discovery process, they already have kind of 80% of the sales skills yeah. um, to do the entire discovery Yeah, they just process. got it. They, they're doing, yeah, 80% of the conversation. Correct. correct. You know, they're <laughs> not like, the tell me the condition, what's up, you, you know, the price you want. Like they're just not going in for the negotiation right essentially and the close yeah so yeah. why why do you feel like someone that speaks perfect english in latin america or philippines i mean you know there are savage salespeople in the philippines it's just a little bit more rare than <clears throat> it is uh in our history with latinos cannot do acquisition like cannot go in there and close um i think they can in certain markets mm. so i'll say this for the last 10 years i was only in vegas this year we went nationwide mm. and the reason I went nationwide was we'll, we'll talk about this on the digital marketing side here later, but um, I just knew that I could get way cheaper leads nationwide um, and they were going to be way easier to close. And that's exactly what's happened is that it's just so much easier to close in these more rural, less competitive markets. But in Vegas, a, a, there's no way a VA could close. Um, it's just too competitive. The skill, like, the, the sellers have too many people talking to them. Like they're just going to lose. Yeah. Um, and also too, even in Vegas, we got to go on in-person appointments to yeah. get the mm. deal done. So obviously they can't close. Um, so you do no virtual in Vegas? No, everything's really? in person. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if he's, if it's, it's your house. Yeah. It's your house. Yeah, of course. 
Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, we're local here, so, like, yeah. it's very easy to do it in person road, yeah. and all that stuff. But nationally, we're all virtual. Mm. And we close over the phone on all of them. And, yeah, I do think that there are markets that VAs can close in. I just don't think they can close in high-end markets. Yeah. Ultra-competitive markets, I'll say. So yeah. in online marketing, uh, where, where are you targeting those rural areas that you can actually dispo? So... When we first started, we were just targeting nationwide. And, dude, I was getting leads for, like, eight to 20 bucks. <laughs> it was nuts. I'm like, this yeah. is crazy, dude. Um, and then, you know, we locked up all these deals that we couldn't dispo. Yeah. And, you know, we dispoed some, but, yeah. you know, most didn't. And I was like, all right, we got to go to, like, a level up. And so now we're basically in, like, five markets. And we'll kind of, like, chill there. And, you know, as time goes on, I'll, I'll start to add more as we want to scale. But, like... You know, those five markets we're in and it's still just testing because, I mean, we're only in month. We're going into month three of this nationwide thing. And, you know, we're now starting to get the closings from the first couple of months. And mm. so it's going good. Mm. But like this month, we're already at 40 deals. And I think I've spent about 40 grand. Yeah. So, you know, a thousand bucks a deal. I'll take it all day. Oh, yeah. All day. All day. Wow, that's that's pretty great. I've seen your ads. As, yeah. uh are I, they good? I said, yeah, I said, okay. as if I was a <coughs> homeowner. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, do you do you have a property? <laughs> I don't. Okay. Yeah. Well, damn. We need to eliminate you from the, the targeting. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Go to hire us and be like, you. That's yeah. not it. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll make an offer to anybody yeah, right yeah. now. That's what my ads. I'm like, I'll buy your house, freaking right here, right now. <laughs> I don't care what it looks like. You ain't got to do nothing. Just Click the link below. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I do think they can close in some of these other markets. And you guys are already seeing that happen, right? 100%. Yeah, a, a, lot of our, a lot of our clients actually, they attempt the nationwide approach. And then we tell them, hey, you got to make sure that you're going to be able to dispo. Yeah. Uh, you got to make sure that you have other exit strategies such as, hey, not only it's cash offers that works right now, but you can insert you know, wholesaling to a retail buyer, innovation to creative financing. Uh, so you make the most out of your money, right? Mm. Uh, so doing on online marketing for nationwide, it works. You just have to be able to target specific areas that it makes sense for your marketing dollars that you can dispo it to a cash buyer or retail buyer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm excited, man. I, I am a big proponent of, you know, the nationwide approach and then, what I'm realizing too, and I kind of knew this would happen is that like some markets will start to reveal themselves to us that we really like. And then Vice we'll versa. just kind of focus on those. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So let's talk about this, right? I mean, we, we talked about VAs a little bit. Now we're talking about running Facebook ads and all this stuff. So you guys have been in an agency for a while. Um, and you know, you guys have made millions doing that and you've got lots of clients and stuff. So walk me through, digital marketing to home sellers. Cause that's what you guys are doing. Like I, by the way, just to, to reference this, we were always like, let's just say the old school approach. Yeah. Right. We did cold calling. We did texting. I ran TV commercials for many, many years and made millions doing it, but I could see that, you know, the return was going worse. Um, and then, you know, I, I've done the other methods too, like direct mail and door knocking and everything else. And what's funny is, I spent millions of dollars on Facebook ads, like for education and my other businesses, but I never did it for trying to buy homes from sellers. Yeah. Mm. And I was like, dude, it just dawned on me one day because I started seeing all these paper lead companies like selling all these leads and stuff. And I was like, huh, I wonder how much they're getting the lead for if there's business selling. opportunity. Right yeah. There. I go, <laughs> dude, I'm seeing everybody use these companies and stuff. I'm like, I mean, if they're selling the leads for this price, they got to be getting them for like, 20% of that. Like, let me go try. Yeah. Cause I already know how to run ads and make ads. And then sure enough, I started running them. I was like, Holy crap. This is way better than all this other crap I've been doing. Yeah. I'm mm -hmm. surprised that it actually, that you haven't done it earlier, man. Cause I know you're a little bit late to go high level. <laughs> yeah, I'm late to you're a little bit late to online uh, ads for, uh, motivated sellers yeah um but building a personal brand is much yeah, harder 100 so percent. well like, you know here's the thing i tell people this all the time like they're like dude you're doing a lot of things and i'll be like yeah like how they're like dude because i just stay laser focused on the one thing i'm like working on at that moment and then i'll get to the next thing once i feel like it's where i want it to be hmm. and so like 
when I built my house living business, I started in 2015, I only spent, I spent five years only doing that. And then when it got to the point where I was doing multiple seven figures, I was like, all right, I'm going to now work on my personal brand. And I just kind of like pushed it off and I didn't try to innovate it or, yeah. you know, do anything. Cra- I'm like, let the run, let the ads run. We got brand. We'll just keep getting deals. So then I focused on social media and, you know, did that, got good at it. And then I focused on education, did that. That's actually where I learned digital marketing was the education space. And I was like, oh, okay, I understand like all these funnels and different things and running ads and making content and targeting and all this crap. So then once I kind of like built that out, I was like, all right, well, how can I use this new skill for other things? Mm. And so that's when I started like applying it to the rest. Yeah. Similar to when I took the course for gym owners and real estate agents and I applied it for investors and flippers. Yeah. It's just, if you know how to... If you know how to close and you translate it to another vertical, it's pretty it's much the same. same. If you know how to do marketing, digital marketing, you translate it to another vertical. As long as, long as you know the frameworks for how to uh, get someone a- attention, uh, retain their attention and make them s- do something, uh, you're going to be able to translate the same skill sets uh, to the yeah. real estate space. So let's talk about this. Like, what have you seen on, and when we say digital marketing, we're talking about like Facebook ads, Google yeah. PPC, YouTube ads. I mean, I, I see some people are doing TikTok ads now. Yeah, yeah. So there's different more, multiple channels that you can actually make this work. Uh, you have Facebook. Well, I call it Meta now because it's yeah. Instagram, Facebook, and they, they're called Meta. Google ads, which is PPC. Uh, you got a YouTube ads, you got TikTok. And who knows, maybe X in the future will work. But yeah, uh, those are the four main ones. And it's, it's, it's not like whether they work or not. It's like how well they work for how long they work and like how scalable are they. That's all marketing, by the way. It's yeah, exactly. That. So it, for example, Facebook ads have a specific cash conversion cycle. Like it, you, the moment that you get a lead the, the, and you get money in the bank, it usually takes about... 90 days mm-hmm. around around that. So yeah. you have to account all of that. Leads are a little bit cheaper, but you have to follow up with them even more. Speed to lead is even more important. Yeah. Um, you have to nurture them even longer because you're capturing them while, while it's a disruption, right? You're disrupting them at the moment of maybe you're thinking about selling their house or they are already like really highly motivated about selling their house. So that's meta, Facebook, Instagram. And you do that through video and... and uh, graphics uh the other one is google ads ppc where there's like high intent and people ultimately come in because they need to search for a solution that a problem that they have and they usually go to google they go to bing and that's those are higher intent cost more but it's high high competition like you're going to have a lot of people also going to the other ads uh that are running in in the four in the first page of google and also they have SEO, so you're gonna have a lot of competition from other um, home buyers. So you have to be very, very good at the follow-up, the speed to lead. You have to actually have a sales process that works, it's repeatable, and gets your leads under contract and closes deals under contract. YouTube and TikTok are a little bit more newer in, in this space. Yeah. Um, it, actually, we've been doing a lot of testing with it, but the good thing about YouTube is that it's both interruption and intent-based. You get to run YouTube ads, whether that's horizontal or vertical in the short form, right, in the shorts, uh, or interrupt them while they're watching a video. And because they have typed something on Google at some point, they have it's the intention. It's very targeted. It's very targeted. Yeah. So you get them through a funnel and the same thing, the same applicable things that you, you happens in Facebook and in Google where speed to lead, follow up, your sales process, being able to have multiple exit strategies are very important for, the, for that. And TikTok is, um, is still fairly new, but believe it or not, man, um, a lot of the population that we want to target are now going to TikTok where they, because TikTok became more of, of a, place where people go and search for things yeah um so it has seo included in it and uh, also uh, i think it, i this, the stats that i saw was that 30 percent uh, of people were over about 45 years old that Dang, are in tiktok, TikTok got a lot older US. quicker yes quick yeah so it's it's a it's a 
it's a great way to approach sellers in different angles. And at the end of the day, you become omnipresent. Yeah. So what, uh, what have you seen as the best ROIs today? Well, it depends on the market. Yeah. It depends on the seasons as well. Google almost always outperform Facebook um, at almost every single market. However, Facebook in many different markets, it outperforms Google. Yeah. So for example, we run a lot of ads in Florida and, and those are Facebook ads. And yeah. in Florida, we're seeing you know 5X, 6.5X returns in our clients. And while in Google, it stays at like around 3.5, 4X yeah, and yeah. so on. And, you know, it might be just the market, also it might be the season. So you have to be able to run both. Yeah. Um, if you're running Google, what, may, what stops you from running a sponsor ad in Google that where people are searching? And then when they go to the website or the landing page, there is a, there is a tracker that p you pixel it to get, a, get them back into Facebook. Yeah. When they get back into Facebook or Instagram. Now they're seeing you in multiple Now they're places. seeing you on a video on a video version, right? And, and it actually, that builds even better report, attracts them to, it makes them trust you even more and you're able to retarget them in two different ways. So. Yeah, would, so I mean like, if they see you on PPC, like you said, they can't really see you. Correct. They're just clicking the website. Whereas on Facebook or YouTube, they're gonna see a video ad. I mean, they could still see a picture on Facebook, but like, have you found that pictures or video ads work better? Um, Pictures work really, really well, uh, except that we notice that people that only see pictures, they, they tend to have a lower pickup rate. Hmm. Um, why? Because they did not spend too much time on the, phone, on, on the watching video, the ad, watching the ad and so on. <clears throat> and and you're, you're able to see someone uh, taking, it could be 60 seconds or two minutes watching the video that you have. And that person will ask you on the phone, like, is, are you the one in the video? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And since, um, and since ultimately something, something that is very important is speed to lead. Yeah. Well, you're going to get them in, in there and they're going to think that you're the person in the video. Yeah. And you, re you already have built a report through, through video marketing, right? Which is one of the best ways. You do that a lot. Yeah. One of the best ways. So, for example, us in our company, we have a bunch of, user generated content from different actors, different demographics. <laughs> I, I, I see yeah. people do this. Yeah. <laughs> different demographics, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm also there. You're going to see me at some point yeah. being a home investor and home investor and, yeah. and just saying, hey, we have multiple offers for you. Especially the GTA commercial. So <laughs> do you think, <clears throat> this is, I, I'd just be curious, that like my ad would just perform better because maybe I'm just better than the actors or people maybe recognize me from other stuff? Well, depends. Who, who's your audience? Homeowners? Yeah, they yeah. probably don't care about Ryan Pineda brand, yeah. right? They yeah. care about solving their problem. Right. Um, but you do transmit the message in a better way, in a clearer way. And also, you're, you, know, you look very credible yeah. whenever you do the video. So you definitely transmit a lot of that to, to them when they see the video. Right. Um, I would definitely 100% even test different type like genres and uh, demographics. I, I would test Latino, I would test white, I would, I would test black, and I would yeah, test yeah. You know, just different ones just to see how it behaves. Uh, because at the end of the day, you can actually produce that here as well as a video. <laughs> video Justin. Ad. Okay, we need a black guy, <laughs> so we're gonna do that. Yeah, we have the we have the Latinas Latin here. girl. Yeah, yep. Yeah. We're gonna yeah. do a Spanish one. Yeah. yeah. Have you noticed uh, women versus men? Yeah, women ha get a lot of attention, <laughs> engagement. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I mean, even with the remote Latinos, you know, like people. Hit have me you up. noticed good-looking people do better? They do always. Yeah. They, they, they we get hit up. Do. <laughs> no, but no, seriously, they, true, we get true. hit up. And they're like, I need a Latina. I'm like, do you want Sofia Vergara? Like, who do you want? Like, <laughs> Sofia Vergara, Shakira? Like, tell me, like, what, what are we talking about? Because they, they're thinking for, for what you guys are talking about, marketing is a lot more visual where VAs, right. it's like sound. Yeah. But I think females, you know, especially marketing will definitely outperform. We have someone in Remote Latinos, because we run ads to get clients in Remote Latinos and to get candidates in Remote Latinos. So we have someone, her name is Natalie. She's really good, you know, speaking on the camera, actually. And uh, we got her to be the first few, you know, five seconds of the video uh, versus me being the five seconds on the video. Her video outperforms, there's higher engagement, cost yeah. per lead is lower. And, and then the second video where I, 
I am speaking, uh, there's I have several videos, but I get a lot more hate. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more. Yeah. While yeah. she gets a lot of comments about, oh, she's pretty, things like that, you know? And so oh, yeah. it helps the algorithm as well, you know? Yeah, the only thing I wonder, and this is a marketing question too, it's like, it's, you know, yes, obviously she'll generate cheaper cost per lead and everything. But, you know, at the end of the day, what's the ROI, right? Yeah, exactly. How many people are clicking it because they're truly ready to, like yeah. you said, a picture ad can work, but they're not as qualified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And uh, lately, what we've, been, what we've been doing is using a, a software called Hyros that yep. actually tells you the entire um, user journey, what they did from the very beginning on every single pixel that we have installed. So whether they went and... Uh, looked at YouTube video, whether they looked at Google, whether they went and did a click in a specific ad and then they exited and then all their journey, you're going to mm -hmm. be able to track it. So you're able to attribute to the specific ad where it came from, whether that's top of the funnel or uh, yeah. bottom of the funnel. So you're, you're able to do that with software like that or just, you know, easy thing to do is always have UTM parameters attached to any ad that you run in the landing page. So you know where the lead are coming from. Like, for example, a lot of people... By the way, what we're talking about, none of these real estate investors care. Yeah, yeah they they're, don't. They're just going to hire you or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're like, what is a UTM? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. You mean UTI? Yeah. UTI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so complicated stuff. That's okay. Why, yeah. No, that's yeah. why I say, like, you know, in our coaching program, I've been telling them, I'm like, yeah, I'm running Facebook ads now. They're doing great, all this stuff. And, you know, I've had some people like, yeah, you know, it, like, should we like try to learn how to do it? And I was like, no, like, <laughs> it's just, dude, it's a lot of work. And it you're going to have to hire a marketing person who's on it every day. Yeah. Just a full time ads. staff. Yeah. Like I'm like, you're better off just hiring an agency. Like, yeah, to sound as nerdy as me, you got to take five years or yeah. something like, of training or something like that, you know? 100%. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you can learn it for sure. Um, one thing that you, uh, people do got to know the difference is that people think that PPL, which is paper lead, you were just talking about that, is an actual marketing channel. Like they think that it's an actual marketing channel. Yeah, they're just using these other ones. And it's just a vehicle the that comes from mm -hmm. uh, Facebook, Google, YouTube, yeah. email marketing, um, whatever, right? S Explain how the P pay per lead model works. Cause like you're, you're an agency. So basically you're just charging a retainer, maybe a percentage of ad spend or something like that, right? That's what a typical agency does. Correct. What what is pay per lead doing? So it's it's simple. Like so, they get a, a bunch of different clients in a di bunch of in in one area, for example, and they start running ads in that area. All those leads that come in that area, people have already selected the county that they wanna that they wanna buy from, uh, their specific zip code that they wanna buy from, and they only get distributed leads from that specific county or that specific zip code right? right so you would only pay for that specific type of lead even let's say if the paper lead company is running ads in that specific area and they get in county one two three well you want in county three two one well they're they're not going to be able to sell three two one unless they have another customer that needs three two one so they'll run a bunch of ads they'll generate a bunch of leads and they will only sell what you want per unit per unit basis. And a lot of different paper lead companies, they sell paper, uh, paper lead on a unit basis on a fixed rate. Could be $200, $300, $400, whatever. On others, they actually have a bidding strategy where yeah, I've seen that. now you're bidding against others and you're essentially winning over $1, $5, $10. Yeah. Um, and you're able to capture that uh, unit of the lead. So. Yeah. So let me tell you why I don't like paper lead. Mm. And... I don't want to say I don't like it because it can, you know, I know people who get great ROIs of paper leads. So I'm not here to hate on paper lead. One day I might sell paper lead. So, yeah. <laughs> but let me, this is what I have seen as the inherent problem of it is that, okay, if I'm generating a lead for 50 bucks, right? They're going to sell it for 250 bucks, mm. right? That the lead did cost 50 bucks. And I understand why they have to sell it for 250 because, like you just said, they're going to market to all these different zip codes, but they're not going to sell them all. Correct. Right? So really, let's say they only sell, I don't know the numbers, right? I, I would love to talk. If anyone's a paper lead like company, I'd really love to hear what the behind the scenes looks like. Yeah. Um, but let's just use simple math. Like, okay, they're charging 250 because 
They're getting all these leads, and maybe they only sell half of them. Yeah. Right? So that already cuts their thing in half, right? Then customers are also allowed to refund in different things for various reasons if the lead's not legit or whatever the case is, right? So now that cuts into margin. And at the end of the day, you know, they make what they make. I'm sure they're killing it. I mean, I, I, they have to be killing it because I see them popping up. Anytime, like, lots of things are popping up, freaking people are making money. Um, but basically, my problem with it is twofold. One is because they do the bidding system and everything else, you lose speed to lead. Yeah. Like, who knows when they got that lead, right? I don't know. Like, if I had a lead, I would keep it out there until somebody bought it. Mm. It don't matter if it came one minute ago, a day ago, a, a week ago. ago. Like yeah. I'm selling the lead, you know, till someone buys it. So you lose speed to lead. And Correct. we, as we know, studies have shown if you don't hit a lead within uh, five minutes, 80% is the drop off. Mm -hmm. Your chances decrease by 80%. Yes. So for that reason alone, it makes me not like it. The second reason I don't like it is because you're passing on all your expenses to the customer for those problems I just said. So they have to charge 250 because they have all these other leads that no one's buying. They got to account for refunds and everything else. When in reality, that lead really was a $50 lead. Yeah, that's right. Actually, if you want to work paper lead and you actually want to make it work the proper way, I would literally talk with whoever is going to offer the paper, paper lead the service and they have to send you the lead instantaneously. That's uh, the, yeah, that's you the have to way. get that's the lead the instantly. You have to be able to connect it with... Uh, chatbots and inside sales agents. Yes. Yeah. So we, when the lead comes in for us, our CRM texts them immediately. Immediately. Same with 100%. us. Same with us. Yep. If, if you, you don't, yeah. then you're going to be, a, you're going to lose the lead. You're not going to have the conversation with the lead. And a, yeah. a lot of these investors, they're by themselves and they're using paper lead companies and they're out like looking at properties and yeah, the leads they're, are they're on an appointment. Bro, they don't yeah. have time to sit there and call the leads. But who knows how long the paper lead <laughs> has even been there before they bought it. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's the biggest issue. That's something that, that, yeah. that is literally the biggest issue yeah. that I have with it. But if, if you do what Esteban just said and you have a team and you have the chat bots, then it's a little bit more manageable and then it becomes about the margin. As long as the paper lead company agrees to send correct, it instantly. Correct, which I don't think they will. But I'm, <laughs> no, sure, I'm sure, I'm sure maybe there's someone out there. Well, maybe maybe someone is going to be able to give you a web hook so it connects it straight to your CRM and then notifies it could be like an inbound call center or like yeah. uh, a team of virtual ba assistants. Basically what I'm saying is this, guys, for all the listeners, I'm a huge believer in digital marketing. I have used agencies and I have built stuff in-house. For most people, an agency is going to be the way to go. Unless you plan on becoming an expert and you're going to build up, you know, my staff is, uh, my marketing team, I don't know, it's probably like 40 grand a month that I, you know, I pay my that's not my social media team. That's like the media, nerds. The media buyers. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. the copywriters. Yeah. The you know, like all these things, right? So for most people, it's not really going to make sense to do it themselves unless they themselves just like really want to learn Facebook. And, but guess what? Then you got to create ads. You got to make creative. Even if you're good at data and all this crap. Yeah. Like there's now the creative content side of it. And you have to find the right team members. Like you have the right team members yeah. and that's easy to send it well, done. Well, cause we've done it for millions of dollars yeah. of our own stuff Correct. over the years. So you just finding a media buyer is probably one of the hardest things people don't read. That's like the one position that we even have trouble with. And we've had, we've hired probably like 50 to 60 media <laughs> buyers, yeah. but they're hard. Like they're hard to come by. Can VAs be media buyers? They, they could. They they could. Yeah, hundred percent. We yeah. I just, we just found some. We just hired someone from Nicaragua, okay. and she's yeah. a Facebook ads and Google ads expert. Yeah, yeah. she's yeah. she's crushing know, it. Yeah, she's 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 a great individual that was working in a digital marketing agency yeah. in Nicaragua, and um, there's a lot of those. Yeah. in in Latin they're not going to be your CMOs. Yeah, to make that yeah. clear. <laughs> they're not coming in and taking <laughs> no, over the marketing. No, no, they, they can buy the ads. Yes, and, yes. But they're 100%. not going to be thinking of ads. No, no, creative. that's you. That's yeah. Well, you know, I'll say this. Okay. One, for like newer investors, you know, whatever, I think hire an agency like you guys is great. Um, I had a, I had an epiphany the last couple of months when I was like building this out and doing it and like having a ton of success. Like all of our students were like, dude, you know, can you run my ads? Can you like, and I'm like, this is all, my business brain is just always like, oh boy, here we go. Here's Canadian another, media. Yeah, I'm like here's another business. Canadian the agency. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I don't want to do the VAs, but um. <laughs> I was like, you know what? 
it really wouldn't be hard for us to do it because we could use my ads and everything I've already created. We know it works. We know it works in lots of places because I'm running them everywhere. And we literally just would need to target their market. It's not hard for us to do. And um, I was like, but man, if they're going to use my likeness and everything else, like I got to make sure they're legit and they don't screw it. It's kind of like a licensing deal. It's kind of like a franchise. It's it's not a franchise because we're not... I don't want to go through all those hoops and yeah. I'm not like all that, but like it is it is, licensing. 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 It is yeah, licensing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was like, what would make sense? Well, number one, I need to get, get a profit split. And then number two, you know, they'd have to pay for the labor of everything that we got to do to go run the ads. Obviously they're going to cover their own budget and ad spend. And I was like, all right, but what's in it for them? Well, they don't have to do nothing. Like I already got all the creative. We're already testing it everywhere. I'm making new creative every week. Yeah. Got the team. The team is already done and built and we know exactly what to do. And we're testing it on me, you know, so we know what the best performers are. And yeah. we're just gonna go throw it, you know, in your market. It's kinda like gym launch for gyms, but now you're doing it for investors. Inve- they actually have their own licensed creatives, videos, all of that, ads, because that's how that's how they run lead generation for gyms. So you'd be investing. Yeah, so Hormo- they were using Hormozzi's like likeness. Is that what they were doing? Not necessarily. I'm not a hundred percent sure because I never joined the program, but I know that he licensed everything, the media, the videos. Yeah. And, and it makes it. so much sense because like that makes perfect sense. And I realized that too. I'm like, man, nobody's gonna, I've, I've made, mil- I've made thousands of videos they're just not going to be as good as me. Like, so yep. even if you paid me a piece, I'm still probably going to be a way better ROI. Yeah. You know, on a per unit base. Cause like, even I was asking this earlier, how the actors do versus maybe, cause like on my video, on my ads and stuff, I'll be like, yo, and my name's Ryan Pineda. I bought hundreds of homes. If you don't believe me, go Google, search me, go watch some YouTube videos. You'll yeah. see it's legit. And it's like, oh dang, like, this ain't this dude ain't playing. You have a lot of credibility, a lot of social proof. Yeah, uh, that that was one of the issues that uh, I in 2021 I run YouTube ads for a few clients. One of them crushed it because he was really good in camera. He had social proof. He is great on camera. Yes, he had social proof, great on camera. But the rest, they are horrible. Flopped. Exactly. <laughs> and so this is what I realized because they're like, should I run my own? F-? I'm like, bro, you don't know how to make content. You ain't got editors. You don't have a team. You don't know how to run ads. Like, no, don't do that. But even if you were to hire an agency and I'm not saying this is wrong, like they can use actors, they can do pictures and all the stuff. But I was like, they're not going to be me. Yeah. Like it just is what it is. Yeah. And I was like, so, all right, I'm just going to take like five of my students. I'm going to beta test it. And, uh, you know, I'll charge a retainer. I'm going to take a small profit split on the deals. We'll do everything. Just freaking close the leads. And it's already been really good. And the reason I like it better than paper lead, like I like I like what you guys are doing and I like what I'm doing. I don't like paper lead because with paper lead, okay, let's say somebody's budget's ten grand, all right, ten thousand dollars, and uh, paper leads charging them two fifty mm-hmm. for a lead, right? So yeah. now they get what is that forty leads a month? Yeah. Okay, but. I know because we're in their market, we're going to go only for their market. So no lead will be wasted and I can get them for 50 bucks. So all of a sudden we, we do 50 bucks a lead. Now, how many more leads is that? That's 200 leads. Yeah. So they get 200 up at bats instead of 40 for yeah. the same budget. Yeah. 100%. You know, and like, yeah, you got to pay a profit split, but you're going to make way more money on 200 leads with way less risk. Yeah. Cause I'm waiting to take my money on the back end when you actually close deals. Yeah. Uh, any anyone should be working with an agency or a model like that if they know what it takes to follow up. Yeah. They know what it takes to actually close a deal, like the sales process. You have uh, uh, different exit strategies so you yeah. can make money out of the same marketing. Um, they have the lead management in uh, place. And, ev- and everything to make sure that Systems, you get a hold yeah. of the lead. Yeah. You, you have a conversation with them and you're able to maximize your marketing ad spend because otherwise, like, it, you get so excited. It's an online lead. But then one of the biggest problems that we see is, oh, they didn't pick up the phone. And I'm like, okay, how <laughs> did you call them? Oh, yeah, just call them the one time. And then just I tried it two hours after. Yeah, and that's the other problem, yeah. right? So I was thinking about this too. Like 
Paper lead gets a bad rep, partly because the people buying it are idiots. Yeah. <laughs> so the bottom. Yeah, yeah. like you're, you're, they're a new investor. It's not their fault. Everyone's an yeah. idiot when yeah. they're new. Yeah. yeah. But like you said, they don't know how to follow up. They don't know how to do it. Like I, my buddy R.J. Bates, who's been on the show, he does nationwide. Yeah. And he buys PPL, and uh, he's gonna probably jump on what I'm doing because. I was like, bro, <laughs> this is a thousand times better than what you're buying. But anyways, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. he uh, he goes, yeah, dude, I'll get like people who tell me PPL doesn't work. Yeah. And I'm not, by the way, I'm not saying PPL doesn't work. I'm just saying there's better ways. But uh, he'll be like, okay, so what'd you buy? And they'll be like, yeah, I bought, you know, three leads. Oh, God. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, you <laughs> buy three leads. What do you think? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> dude. <laughs> and the problem is that they're new. They don't know. They don't know. And their budget's not. Their budget's yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah, and so yeah, they're like, yeah. dude, I bought three leads and I didn't get a deal. Yeah. I was like, bro, if I got a deal every three leads, I'd be freaking running this country. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, you're not willing to do four <laughs> to six months of digital marketing. Don't do any paper lead. Don't do any agency. Just focus Just, on cold calling. Yeah. yeah focus on hustle. maybe. Yeah. Hustle. Yeah. Cold call. Direct mail. All yeah. of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That I, I was cracking up because I was like, dude, yeah, because that's the hard part, right? Like the pay per lead companies, like obviously the people that buy are going to buy because they're getting ROI. Any marketing, if you're getting ROI, you're going to keep doing it until yeah, you do 100%. Right. Um, but I was just like, man, dude, if I'm going to put my name on it and run my, like, I only want to work with people I know how to freaking do things yeah, because yeah. I'm, I'm making all my money on a profit split. Mm, yeah. And so I'm like, dude, I'm only going to my top students. And people I know that are legit. Yeah. Plus, if you start working with everyone and their mother, you're just going to have low quality clients. That's the worst thing yeah, for yeah, an no, agency. Yeah. Do that, you know? we, we both yeah. did that for a long yeah. time. Yeah. So right now we're, um, we're beta testing it. It's like under, like people don't even know I've been doing it. This is the first time I've ever said it. Um, but I like it. I do. And I didn't realize that that's what Jim Launch did at a uh, scale. And like, I just see why. It's the easiest sell ever. Like I approached... Like no one said no, <laughs> like literally nobody has said no. Yeah. They're like, no, that's a fair deal. I'm good. Mm. And then the people who are like, well, I don't want to say they're no's, but they're like, not right now because X, Y, Z's happened. Like we just started this new marketing channel. We want to start it a month from now, two months from now. Mm -hmm. um, others have been like, you know, Hey, like, let's see, you know, what the results are, you know, in other markets. Once you start launching there, it's like, all right, whatever. Yeah. Price will go up later, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so far, everything has been, uh, what, Facebook or you also doing Google or... Right now, we're just doing Meta. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've done PPC forever, too. Yeah. So, yeah. like, I understand PPC, but I just think that we have, like, such an advantage video marketing. Yes. That I'm just, like, leaning into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, also test, uh, well, I don't know if you have the team that does the YouTube. Yeah. It has YouTube. Yep. Um, and, and TikTok. Yeah. Because those are marketing channels that could catch you, um, you know, a cheaper cost per lead is not too saturated. Yeah. Um, cause I'm not saying that Facebook or Meta is super saturated. People do it, but they do it wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Bro, I've seen these like, and I, I would have to assume they're pay per lead companies ads. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what the heck is this? This is the worst ad I've ever seen. Who's <laughs> clicking this? Yeah. It's crazy. And you, you have the advantage of video. Yeah. You know, you have the advantage of either having your team or yourself, Mm. Um, just spend 30 seconds or have people spend 30 seconds watching a video of you. Yeah. And that's the ultimate jab, jab, right hook. Right. Yes. It is. We, yeah. we, we need to cover a paper deal as well. Cause that, I think that's the, the <laughs> okay. What is paper deal? Tell me this. I've never well, heard of this one. It, so paper <laughs> deal is a new, so this marketing agency is that actually came maybe a year ago. They wanted to penetrate the market somehow, and they found this opportunity by doing a Hormozy slam dunk offer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pay per deal. Pay only after you close the deal. All right, sure. I mean, I'm kind of doing that to a degree. To a degree, but yeah, this is like only going to be, it's marketed that way, right? Yeah. And so people don't know, first of all, that you have to have a startup fee. All right, sure, you have a startup fee. They... What's they the have fee usually usually they go from three to five ten k, but the problem is that they try to do this with everyone. So a paper deal is sounds so good, right? Like, oh, I pay after you. Yeah, I don't goes. have to put any you money know, up. I don't just have to a put startup fee. Yep. But when they get get into the call, it's just it's a lie. It's just not 
That's not how it is. You have to pay from five to 10K yeah. uh, to get started. Yep, okay. uh, and then after that, it's either a thousand dollars or ten percent or whatever after the deal and closes. Ad spend. And ad spend. Yeah, they got to pay well. the ad spend. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so we've been getting a lot of clients from from those from those deals because they essentially took all the money that they that they could ever to buy into this service, either three k, five k, seven k, whatever. But they they don't really realize that. Look. In order for, to get into this game, you need uh, lead gen, you need lead management, you need yeah. sales, yeah. you need all of these things. Yeah. So as a newbie, even you're those dreaming. paper deal people, it doesn't even make sense for them. Correct, <laughs> like because they're not they're not closing deals. Yeah, <laughs> and, and as a newbie, if they suck. Because like you know, as yeah. you're explaining, I'm like, okay, we're kind of doing that. Like we don't have a startup. Like it's just because there are already people in my coaching program. Correct. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, you're gonna pay a monthly retainer. And then I'm going to take a percentage on the back end. Yeah. But I'm already training them how to do exactly. it. Exactly. So but I know they're good. But if you're letting newbies and dream no, about no. this offer. Newbies, if you're listening, you, you do not qualify for. No. You go with Esteban. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll take care of you. Yeah. Yes. No, you will. He'll take care of you great. Yeah. Yeah. But I just, not me. <laughs> not, not with this. I'll take care of you in coaching. Yes. But I'm not going to run your ads if you're brand new. And yeah. No. I'm Go get coached by Ryan. Yeah. And, come and then come to, come to us. And yeah, remote, remote Latinos. And remote Latinos. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, that's, that's an interesting thing. Cause like if you just take anyone and everyone, like you said, they're not going to get results. Yeah. And it may not even be the agency's fault. They just suck. Actually, let's talk about that. Right. I've had a lot of agency owners on the podcast. Cause I'm so honestly, you want to know what I do with my podcast guest? Whatever I want to learn, I just invite them on the podcast and I just freaking ask them everything I need to know, right? <laughs> That's the best smart. way. It's smart. Yeah, I freaking love it. Love and I got it. Russell Brunson coming uh, in a couple of weeks. I'm just, I'm so ready yeah. <laughs> to just pick his brain. <laughs> but, um, you know, what I've noticed that's hard for an agency owner is that you are so dependent on your client to not only have a great offer, but also have great salespeople and fulfillment and everything else, or else you can't, like, you just, you'll churn out. Um, now, the good thing with real estate is the offer's the same for everyone. So they never have to get creative with, like, creating an actual offer. And that's why I love real estate, because it's very plug and play. Well, actually, okay, I'm going to say something about that, because one of the few angles that we do, you know how, you know you can get clients in different angles, and right. even nowadays, you can do innovations, creative financing, yeah, yeah. right? If you are able to and have an angle for homeowners where they understand that they can potentially get more than just the regular 50%, 60% cash offer that you know people always call them for, yeah. or it sounds better, then you're probably gonna get a lot of people interested, cost per lead is gonna decrease. Yeah. So we have different angles and to get them. So yeah. for example, we always ask this question to our clients, how are you able to fulfill your, your homeowner, homeowners and your buyers? Well. I can do cash deals, but do you do creative? Do you do innovations? Yeah. Can you do that? Um, if they say yes and stuff, which a lot of people now are doing it, uh, that means that our ads now can say things like, get a full price cash offer. Get a top dollar cash offer, for yeah. example. Right. Or we're gonna be able to give you multiple offers for your house and whatever makes sense uh, for you, we're gonna go for that one. Um, and, or we can buy your house in many different creative ways we can buy cash, but we can also buy full price. Yeah. And that is a different angle that people are not seeing it. And we started doing that. It actually gives a lot of results. Yeah. Especially when our clients can do different exit strategies. Yeah. So. No, I'm with you on that. And I, for me, I'm just assuming they know how to do that. Because if you don't right now, I don't know how you're making money. Right? Like you better figure out how to innovate and flip and wholesale and all the different ways. Um, but... Yeah, like for me, it's like, okay, there's three things you basically need to learn as an investor. Like that's your offer. Just figure out how to do those three things. You'll be fine. Um, whereas you're going to go start any like other business. Dude, your offer is literally from scratch. Like, yes. What are we selling? How much is it going to cost? How, many, how long are we doing it? Is there a startup? Fee? Like there's mm. like all this new complexity. Mm. Real estate doesn't have that. Real estate to it's, me. It's more simple. Oh, dude. That's why I have the dumbest people have a lot of success because it's just, <laughs> it takes no creativity to be good at real estate. Yes. Like it's very plug and play. 
Yes. It takes a lot of creativity to have a great podcast, to create a great offer, to build market. ads. Yeah, market. Dude. I say this all the time. Real estate marketing is literally the dumbest marketing ever. <laughs> now that I've been in the game with other real, mar like I call it real marketing. Everybody's like, how do I send direct mail? Well, I don't know. There's like five postcards you could pick from. Just pick one. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Just pick your list and mail it out. Just do it. it Every marketing channel works. Yeah. Okay. What about my other cold calling? Okay. It's not rocket science. You pick up the phone. You call. Cold call. Right. But now we're talking Facebook ads and the complexity that comes with making a great ad and click-through right. rate and all these things. You're like, okay, this actually takes creativity and skill, whereas direct marketing or direct mail and- That's right. You know, cold call, they take literally no skill. Yeah, we always tell our clients, look, if you're coming, uh, we tell, we call them REIpreneurs. That's, we yeah. baptize them as REIpreneurs. REIpreneurs, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so when they come in, we, we tell them, okay, look, uh, these are, Essentially, where you're telling me these are these are your issues. You're not getting leads. You're not getting volume. You're not getting deals. That's because you're not leveraged. Um, and there is four levers that we actually come in and help you with. Well, do you bring in the money with the capital? We also have labor, which is uh, the people that we can remote Latinos, remote Latinos, yep. like that we can place you in your company. But we also have the media and the technology. Yep. Once you have those four levers. Um, you, if you know how to multiply those four levers and amplify it, you'll become an unstoppable, unstoppable entrepreneur because yeah. you're, you're able to uh, get more output from the same input that you used to do before. Yeah. And you're, me for example, using media that a lot of people don't, people don't think, okay, Ryan Pineda is where he is at and he can come up with any product. He has a lot of influence. His message just travels across hundreds of thousands of uh, computers, TV channels, whatever. And with one product that he launches, even if it's a high ticket, low ticket, you're going to sell it, yeah. right? He has leveraged media for such a long time. So you're not going to do that with the advertising that we're going to do yeah. for you, right? So media, you're going to leverage that. And the other one is technology. Well, I'll, believe it or not, man, a lot of people that have been in the, in, the, in the space for years and years, closing two to three deals a month, they don't have a proper CRM, oh, bro, they have a Google spreadsheet. Systems. They have Google Sheets. Yes. Yeah, I know. It's I'm so like, from their phone, you know. Yeah, it's like, and oh I'm like, gosh. you're not leveraged. You know yeah. the amount of, you You know you could eliminate seven steps from the 10 steps that something used to take you. Seven yeah. steps. You know your CRM can text them in one minute. Exactly. You don't need second. to. Second. A second. Like, yeah. and, and if you're able to leverage technology, media, and labor, and now that's where you created a leveraged entrepreneur. Yeah. Now you're building a business. I actually did a YouTube video on this. So that I think that comes from Naval Ravikant. Yes. And um, I'll link to it down below for everyone. You guys can watch it after. But I added a fifth lever in there. So, yeah, those are definitely four for sure. My fifth one was just skill. Hmm. Like at the end of the day, right, if you have more skill than the next guy, that is a huge lever. And the way I always like I mess around is like, dude, I could go and rip 10 ads right now in 10 minutes. Yeah. That's a skill. It might take somebody literally a week to go do it. Cause they're like, I got to script the ads. I got to do some research. I got to, you know, do a hundred takes to perfect it. Right. So now it took them a week and took me 10 minutes. Like, I like that. That is a huge lever that people just don't mm. really understand the skill lever. Same thing with the sales guy, right? hundred percent. If I, if I could close twice as many as you, I, that's two times the lever. Yep. Right. So do you have a book? Are you putting that in your book? I should, <laughs> I should, but skill is definitely a lever that people 100%, don't think about. 100%, yeah. So no, I, I love it, man. I, I totally love what you guys are doing. You guys are solving problems that most real estate professionals should not solve themselves. They do not have time to go hire VAs. They don't know. They just don't have the expertise. They should not run their own Facebook ads. It's really hard. I'll tell you guys, it's really hard. Um, I don't really know anybody who's like running Facebook ads themselves and like doing lots and lots of deals themselves. I literally can't, no. I might be the only one I know. Probably. Like I just, it, they're two very different skills and I would never have learned it had I not gone into this other industry where I needed to learn it. Yes. Right. I would have never thought to learn it for real estate. Mm. So I just think people need to hire guys like you to do it honestly. And you know, I, I forgot to even mention this at the beginning, but you guys are going to be at WealthCon. 
So, you know, you guys will, you know, you're one of the main sponsors. And so, you know, I don't take sponsorship lightly for people that um, come. Like I, I only want sponsors that I know can deliver and fulfill for people. And so um, I know you guys can do that. So for anyone who's looking for ads, for VAs, I don't even want to call them VAs, new team members. Yes. You know? Yes. Then we this got is him the into spot. The new. <laughs> you know, like yes. we, want, we want team members. For me, anyways, go get the Filipinos. Help my people out. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I think it's great. Uh, where where can these where can everyone find you? So social media at Estenic E S T E N I C K. Okay. Uh, uh, we also have our company social media hustle media uh, or remote Latinos. And then just my name O M E R B L O C H Instagram Facebook. Cool. So we'll link to all that down below, guys. It's great having you on the show. Looking forward to seeing you at WealthCon. Can't wait. Let's We're bringing our remote team members. So yeah. you're going nice. to meet a few of them. Bogotá, our operations Mexico. manager from is she's from Mexico, okay. for example. She's right. a beast. She's a beast. And so beast. And our CSM from Bogota. So Nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. She's also a beast. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Bringing the whole squad. You guys will get to see these are real team real members life. and people. Yes. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> like, yeah. They got lives and personalities and yes. everything, like yes. just like everyone else. Exactly. Just, and our shirts, we're not going to unveil them yet, but we got special uh. shirts coming in. <laughs> oh, did, you took my advice? You guys are going to have some cool shirts? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We're going to show it to you. Yeah. Okay, I'll have to Off see camera. It. All right, cool. perfect. <laughs> well, guys, go check them out. Go to WealthCon, meet them in person, and uh, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace. Peace.